Hi, welcome to Cooking with Jade. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a chocolate matzah cake. Wonderful for Passover, and this is also a great cake to make with the kids because the kids will love helping with this. So to get started, we're going to need two eggs, bring them to room temperature. We need six matzahs. We'll need sugar, cocoa powder, an orange, one and a half sticks of margarine. This will be a part of cake and some water. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to get a heavy saucepan. And I'm going to measure two cups of water. and one cup of sugar. We're gonna start off, this is for making a simple syrup, and we're gonna make an orange flavored syrup because orange goes wonderful with chocolate. Now to this, we're gonna add some orange peel. So when you're getting the orange peel, what you want to do is try to get as little bit of the white as possible. So what I do is I take a serrated knife and I just sort of peel around it. And if you get some of the white in, it's okay. And then you get the benefit, you get to eat the orange. And you want to do maybe half or two thirds of the orange in the peel. And then we're going to take this and we're going to set it on high on the stove. As we're cooking the orange and the, excuse me, the orange and the water and the sugar, we want to bring it to a boil. So when we start, what we want to do is to start and make sure that all the sugar is dissolved. So we can go ahead and just stir it a little bit. And we're going to keep an eye on it as it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we'll turn it down to a soft boil. We don't want a heavy rolling boil. And we'll keep an eye on it. And once we see that all the sugar is dissolved, we're then going to go ahead and cook it for another five minutes without touching it to help take some of the steam off to let it go. While that's working, we can go ahead and get some of the other parts ready. So we're going to start off, we're going to take our bowl, excuse me, and we're going to separate our two eggs. Uh, excuse me, before we separate the eggs, we're going to go ahead and put the margarine into a mixing bowl. And we're going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar. Bring the sugar back over. So here I have a one quarter measuring cup. And a one half measuring cup. And if you're having a lot of kids, you can put a little bit of extra sugar in. And we're going to be adding cocoa later, so you need to make sure you don't skimp on the sugar. A lot of recipes, sometimes we cut back on the sugar. We don't want to do that here because if you cut back on it, the cocoa is very bitter. So this takes a bit of time to do. And again, if you have a power machine, you can use it with a paddle, a paddle mixer and just go ahead and blend it until you get all the sugar incorporated into the margarine.
And as you get it blended in, it will start to get a little fluffy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a quarter cup of cocoa powder. So what I like to do with cocoa powder is you notice I left half the lid on when I took it off. This way I can put my measuring cup in. I can get a nice full cup and then I can use that top to level it out. Make sure I get a full cup. I'm now down near the end of this, of this container. Might be time pretty soon to buy a new one. And you have half a cup and add that right in. And when you blend the cocoa powder in, start very slowly, because if you go too fast, because the powder is very light, it'll puff up everywhere. As we get that blended in, we want to go ahead and separate two eggs. So we're going to put the whites into our big bowl. And to separate the eggs, just pour them back and forth between the shells. And the yolks will go right into our chocolate mix. best always when cracking eggs, especially if you're going to separate them, to do it on the flat of, a, of the bowl. It makes it a little bit easier and you have a less risk of getting shells. And I'll just do a quick rinse of the hands. And I'll go back over and I'll take another look at my sugar. Not quite at a boil yet. And I don't know if you can see, but they're starting to see some of the steam coming off, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to go here and we're going to incorporate the egg yolks into our butter, sugar, and chocolate mix. Now, you can make the sugar syrup ahead of time, which is actually good because you really want it to cool down before you use it. And we have that all, and it's a little thick, but still nice and fluffy. And now we're going to beat our egg whites, and we want to beat them to a stiff peak. Well, I'm doing that, I hear my 
syrup is now coming to a boil. Okay, my sugar is completely dissolved. So I'm going to let that sit now. I'm going to take a look at the clock and let that sit for a good five minutes while it continues to uh, reduce down. Now we want to go ahead and mix our egg whites in with our chocolate mix. So the chocolate mix is a little bit heavy, so what we want to do is start off and only put about a third of the egg whites in, and we're going to fold it in so that we don't lose a lot of our air, and we can keep this nice and soft. So to fold it in, you just go a straight line down and flip it over. And you're sort of cutting it in, and that's called that's a folding technique. And it starts off a little bit thick, but it'll thin out as we go. And as we get it incorporated in, we'll go ahead and add the next third in. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly a third, sort of close enough there. Starting to lighten up. And you might need to get a spoon and just sort of scrape it down if it's sticking to your spatula. So you can get it all nicely incorporated. And now we'll go ahead and put the last bit of our egg white in. And we'll fold that in. Now this time when we fold it in, we're going to want to make sure that we get all the egg white incorporated so we don't see any of the white anymore. So all we see is the chocolate color. So it takes a little bit of time. And as you notice, I'm also spinning the bowl to make sure I can get it all, all incorporated. Okay, that's nicely blended. And now our sugar syrup has been at the boil and all the sugar is dissolved. Now again, you want to let this cool a little bit before you use it. Now with the sugar syrup, you can actually make it ahead of time and refrigerate it. So I have one here that I prepared the other day so we can go ahead and show you the assembly of the cake. So we're going to start off with a plate. And we're going to put them 
upside down on the cake, and this is the part the kids have fun. They get to paint. So they have the sugar syrup, and you can see it's not, it has a little bit of a yellow, an orange color to it, and that's from the, uh, that's from the orange put we put in. And all we're doing is liberally brushing the entire sheet of matzah with the orange syrup. We're then going to flip it over and do the other side as well. Now you can put this on any type of a, of a cake pan or a plate that you like. I happen to use one of these large plates that I have which has a little bit of a bow to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this back over so that it sort of fits into the plate a little bit better. Now what we want to do, and then we get an offset spatula and we take a little bit of our chocolate mixture and just spread it right over top of our matzah. You don't want a real thick layer, but you know enough that you can get the chocolate in there and get the flavor. And the kids can have fun with this too. They can make little designs. Then we want to go ahead and do that with the next layer. So what I like to do, because it gets a little messy doing it on the same plate, is I like to use a second plate and go ahead and brush it. Now the mutt is still very stiff, but when we're done, we're gonna refrigerate this and the syrup will soak into the matzah and soften it up for us. And we put the second piece on, add some more chocolate, And we continue on for a total of six pieces of matzah. And the kids can have a lot of fun with doing this if you're doing that because they love to paint and get a little messy. And if you don't have a, a pastry brush, or I like to use this kind of a, um, the, a rubber type of brush, you can use a teaspoon and just put it on slowly and mix it in. Next layer of chocolate. This recipe is also very nice because a lot of times we have so much matzo, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with it and come up with new ideas on how to use it. So this is a nice way to use it up. It's a different, little, little different take of making a matzo cake. There's sheet number four. Nice even layer of chocolate.
Layer five. And then our last layer. It goes a little bit faster if you have one of your kids helping you, because they can be brushing the syrup onto the matzah while you're spreading the chocolate. And then we put our last layer on. So here we can go a little bit thicker with the chocolate because this is what's going to be on the top. Now when you serve this cake, if you want to make it a little bit prettier, what you can do is take some chocolate bar and just shave it, and it makes some shave, shavings right on the top. And if you have some chocolate left over, no problem. You can just take it and put it right along the side and sort of dress the sides of the cake up, or you can just leave it all on the top and let it go so you can see the so you can see the layers. Now, almost done. This is our finished chocolate cake, but it's important that we let it sit in the refrigerator for at least an hour, and that gives the syrup and the chocolate times to melt it together and to soak in. I like to put it in for about an hour uncovered, and then you can wrap it in, in a plastic wrap and it'll keep for a couple of days. Okay, so our matzo cake has had some time in the fridge. Let's see what it looks like. And again, you can decorate, and what I always recommend is using a serrated knife to cut it. It cuts through a little bit easier. And look at those lovely layers throughout. Let's see what it tastes like. Perfect. 